How much does workers' compensation insurance cost? Workers' compensation rates are based on the nature of the insured's operations. The premium is based on the payroll for each classification. The insurance company calculates the premium according to the basic manual for workers' compensation and employers' liability insurance and all applicable rating plans. This workers' comp cost manual contains rules, classification descriptions, rates lost costs for each classification, and state-specific exemptions for writing workers' compensation insurance. This condition effectively makes the manual and the rating plans part of the policy. The insured must maintain payroll and other pertinent records and make them available for the company to examine at all reasonable times. How much does workers' compensation insurance cost? The average price of a standard $1 million workers' comp insurance policy for small businesses ranges from a few hundred to several thousand per year based on location, industry, payroll, and experience. How is workers' compensation insurance premium calculated? The rates or lost costs apply to each $100 of payroll, regardless of the time period over which the payroll was expended. The premium is determined by multiplying the payroll by the applicable rate or lost cost. Subject to certain minimums and maximums, special charges, discounts, and exceptions reviewed below. For example, the premium charge for a payroll of $100,000 for one month is the same as the premium charge for $100,000 payroll paid out over an eight-month period. If the rate for landscaping is $3.25 and the insured has 10 employees who each earn $500 per week, the basic premium is determined as follows. Weekly payroll $2,500 times 52 weeks equals $130,000 total payroll. $130,000 total payroll times 3.25 rate per $100 of payroll equals $8,450 annual workers' comp insurance premium. If the policy is written for less than one year or is canceled, the manual rate is applied to the payroll expenditures from the effective date to the cancellation date. However, some states and some insurance companies require short rate return premium calculations if the insured cancels the policy for reasons other than it's going out of business. Below are some answers to commonly asked workers' compensation insurance cost questions. What are workers' comp payroll exemptions that reduce cost? Workers' comp insurance cost and premium calculations are usually based on the entire payroll amount, subject to the following exceptions. Board lodging, services bonuses, commissions, and tips. The dollar value of certain non-monetary items, such as board, rent, housing, merchandise, credits, and any kind of services an employee receives as compensation for services is included in the payroll used to determine workers' compensation premiums. The bonuses, commissions, and tips an employee receives are included in the payroll basis for premium calculations. Vacation pay, sick pay, holiday pay, all piecework earnings, and money received under incentive or profit sharing plans are also included. Overtime pay. The insured should maintain payroll records so that overtime pay can be distinguished from and separated from regular pay. If it does, the payroll used to calculate for the applicable classification does not include overtime pay. For example, assume an employee works 50 hours in one week. The rate of pay for the first 40 hours is $10 per hour. The employee receives time and a half or $15 per hour for the last 10 hours. To determine the payroll amount to use to determine the premium, all hours worked are figured based on the straight time pay of $10 per hour for 50 hours. What are workers' compensation payroll limitations that lower premiums? In some states, Premium is based on a certain amount of the average weekly wage for the payroll classification for each employee. Payroll of executive officers. So how much does workers' compensation insurance cost? In most states, the premium calculated includes executive officer payroll. The payroll is subject to a maximum for each individual rounded to the nearest $100. This formula and amount varies by state, and the amount a given state uses must be checked and determined. Each state establishes its own minimum amount. For example, one state may use $1,500 per week for active officers and $2,000 per year for inactive officers. State exceptions on executive officers. 
In some states, executive officers who do not fall under the workers' compensation laws because their employers are not-for-profit organizations or who are not covered for other reasons may elect to be covered. In some states, executive officers can elect to be excluded. Partners. In states where partners are subject to the workers' compensation laws, or in states where partners may elect to come under the law, each partner's payroll is usually set at a flat amount, such as $25,000 per year. Domestic employees. In some cases where these employees are subject to the workers' compensation law and the policy covers them, the premium is based on the nature of the work or duties performed at the home. Per capita, each person. Premiums. Rates for a few specific classifications are on a per capita, each person basis, instead of on a payroll basis. This approach applies to in-servants, out-servants, private chauffeurs, and occasional servants. The occasional servant per capita rate applies when a servant is employed for less than half of the customary full-time hours. How do I select the right workers' compensation insurance classification codes? Governing classification. How much does workers' compensation insurance cost? The rate that applies to any risk is based on the classification that best describes the work performed or activities conducted. This is known as the governing classification. The governing classification includes the payroll of all employees engaged in a given operation, subject to certain exceptions reviewed below. For example, a shoe manufacturer's governing classification is shoe or boot manufacturing. That classification includes the payroll of machinists, porters, and other employees, even though they do not actually make shoes. If an employer has separated businesses and the operations require using two or more different classifications, the governing classification is the one that has the largest amount of payroll. That governing classification then applies to the payroll of miscellaneous employees, such as maintenance employees. Standard Exceptions there are five employee classifications specifically identified for rating purposes. These are known as standard exceptions, as outlined below. Clerical. These employees perform duties limited exclusively to office work, performed in buildings or on floors separated from manufacturing or other operations. This classification also applies in cases where departments are separated by structural partitions from the employer's other workplaces. Salespersons or collectors. Outside, these employees perform activities primarily away from the employer's premises. However, they do not deliver the employer's merchandise. Clerical telecommuter employees. These are employees who perform clerical functions at, from their homes. This class has grown exponentially due to COVID-19 and so many employees are working from home. Drivers, chauffeurs, messengers, and their helpers. NOC commercial. These employees' principal duties are performed on or in connection with vehicles used in the employer's business. Automobile salespersons. The payroll of employees who fall into one of these standard exceptions is not included with the payroll of employees engaged in the employer's regular business. Each standard exception is rated separately. These classes are not considered or used to determine the risks governing classification. Exceptions in construction or erection work. A construction risk may include separate and distinct operations, such as masonry, drywall, or carpentry. In that case, each different and separate type of work is subject to a separate classification and rate. The employer must maintain separate payroll records for each type of work in order for the separate classifications and rating to apply. If it does not, the entire payroll is assigned to the highest rated classification that applies to any part of the job. The payroll of any one employee is not usually subject to division and is assigned to the highest rated classification. However, this rule may have exceptions in certain states and not apply to employees engaged in certain activities. What other factors can affect workers' comp insurance cost? Expense constant. The expense constant is a premium charge applied after all other premium calculations are complete. It offsets the higher expense factor on policies that have smaller premiums. In most states, the expense constant ranges from $100 to $200. Audit premiums. The workers' compensation and employer's liability insurance policy states that the final earned premium is based on the rules, classifications, rates, and rating plans in the rating manual 
of the rating organization that has jurisdiction. The exact payroll for the policy year cannot be determined in advance. Because of this, the policy is written with a deposit premium based on the insured's estimated annual payroll for each classification. The insurance company audits the insured's payroll records after the policy expires. If the audit determines that the earned premium is larger than the deposit paid at inception, the insured pays the difference. On the other hand, if the final audit premium is less than the deposit, the insured company refunds the excess to the insured. Depending on the insurance company and the amount of premium, an audit may be waived completely, and the deposit premium becomes the final or flat premium. In other cases, the insurance company may ask the insured to submit voluntary payroll information in place of a formal audit. That information is the basis of the final audit and premium adjustment. The insurance company and any rating organization that has jurisdiction has the right to audit and examine the insured's records, ledgers, contracts, and tax reports that relate to the premium or employee payroll. This right applies during the policy period and for up to three years after the policy expires. Interim premium adjustments. Larger risks may be written subject to more frequent payroll audits to determine the premium. This is almost standard procedure on larger construction risks. In this arrangement, the deposit premium charged is less than the estimated annual premium. As a result, payroll records are audited periodically, such as semi-annually, quarterly, or monthly. Policies written on this basis usually have a minimum deposit premiums based on the frequency of audits and interim premium adjustments. For example, monthly audit. The deposit premium is at least 25% of the estimated annual premium. Quarterly audit. The deposit premium is at least 50% of the estimated annual premium. Semi-annual audit. The deposit premium is at least 75% of the estimated annual premium. Any policy subject to interim audits cannot have a deposit premium that is less than the policy minimum premium. The minimum premium varies from state to state, and the insured must pay premiums after each interim audit is completed. In cases that involve interim audits, the deposit premium is held and applied to the final audit. Under this procedure, the insurance company may waive actual interim audits and the premium is determined based on the payroll statements that the insured prepares. The insurance company conducts the actual audit for the entire policy period after the policy expires. Minimum premiums. Each manual classification has its own minimum premium. This premium applies even if the actual audited payrolls develop a lower earned premium, except in cases where a policy is canceled before the normal expiration date. Only one minimum premium applies to each policy. The highest minimum premium applies to policies that have more than one classification. Deductibles. Many states have developed deductible plans to apply to workers' compensation insurance. This is an attempt to respond primarily to the rapidly rising medical costs and the resulting increase in workers' compensation premiums, and to encourage employers to develop and implement workplace safety measures. Some plans apply the deductible to the indemnity amount paid to the injured employee. Others apply the deductible to medical expenses only. In some cases, the deductible applies to both indemnity and medical expenses. Drug-free environment discount. Some states require applying a discount or credit to the workers' compensation premium of employers that provide and enforce a drug-free workplace. Three-year fixed-rate policies. Some states permit writing policies for a three-year term in cases where the premium is relatively small and the insured and insurance company agree to do so. These policies use the rates in effect at inception and apply for the entire three-year term, regardless of any rate changes during the period. The deposit premium is based on the current manual rates applied to the projected three-year payrolls. How can I get a discount on my workers' compensation premium? On larger risks with more payroll, a discount is allowed on the portion of the premium that exceeds a certain minimum amount. This discount reflects the lower expenses for the insurance company to handle larger risks and varies from state to state. The discount percentage increases in direct proportion to the premium size. Each state has a separate premium discount percentage tables that apply to premiums for coverage that stock insurance companies write as opposed to non-stock insurance companies.
In nearly every state, the premium discount is based on the total premium for all states that the policy covers. As a result, the premium discount applies on an interstate basis. This means that each state has a different discount percentage that applies to the portion of the premium the state develops. What is experience rating in workers' compensation? In order to encourage employers to reduce the frequency and severity of industrial accidents, most states have a method that awards risks that have a better than average experience and penalizes risks that have poor experience. This is the experience rating plan. It penalizes accident frequency to a greater extent than accident severity. For example, a risk that has 10 losses of $10,000 each for a total of $100,000 develops a larger experience debit than an identical risk that has one incurred loss for $100,000. Experience rating is calculated by the rating organization that has jurisdiction that maintains detailed loss records for all risks eligible for experience rating. An individual employer's loss experience is compared to the average loss experience for the industry and a factor known as the experience modification is developed. This factor modifies the premium developed by the manual rates that apply to the classifications involved and applies for the entire policy term. It is expressed as a decimal. So a 0.7 factor produces a 30% credit and a 1.2 factor produces a 20% surcharge or debit. The experience modification rewards employers that have superior loss experience with lower premiums and penalizes risks that have poor loss experience. The experience modification calculation formula is fairly complicated and applies only when the manual premium is higher than a certain threshold amount. This is because loss experience on larger risks is more credible than for small ones. The minimum premium threshold for eligibility for the plan is different in each state. The experience rating formula does not include loss experience for the first year before the current policy period. This is because those losses are relatively green and have not developed sufficiently. Risks large enough to qualify for experience rating are automatically subject to the plan. The insured cannot decide to not be eligible for experience rating or decline to have the modification applied. Some risks have operations in more than one state. In those cases, the experience rating plan automatically applies on the interstate basis if the risk qualifies for experience rating in any state where the insured conducts operations. In such cases, one experience modification is calculated and applies to the entire manual premium for each state where the insured has operations. Interstate experience modifications are calculated and published by the Interstate Rating Bureau of the National Council on Compensation Insurance, except for monopolistic states and certain other states. What's a retrospective rating plan in workers' compensation? How much does workers' compensation insurance cost? Retrospective rating provides a way to adjust the premium for a current policy based on the losses incurred during its term. For example, an insured may choose a retrospective rating plan to recognize its favorable loss experience during the current policy period, compared to unfavorable losses incurred during the experience period used to develop the experience rating modification. It is also possible to apply a retrospective rating plan to a policy to develop a higher premium because an unfavorable loss experience. Retrospective rating plans always apply to a policy to modify the premium after applying the experience rating modification. How do I get a workers' compensation insurance quote? To see how much workers' compensation insurance costs for your business, call the Business Workers' Comp Quote Line at 855-767-7828 from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time to start your free quote or simply click on the link below.